Hello everybody, I'm Paul Anand Tambaya. I'm an infectious disease physician and professor of medicine. I'm giving this talk here in my personal capacity as chairman of the Singapore Democratic Party and not in connection with any university or hospital. This is a special edition of Ask Paul Anything and here is part one. The first question is from Su Hui. She asks, what should we consider a reliable sign that the severity of the situation is diminishing? Is the rate of new infections a good indicator? Well, yes, the rate of new infections is a good indicator. If the rate of new infections is going down, that's a sign that efforts are making progress. And ideally, the rate of new infections should go to zero. For those of you who remember what happened during SARS, Singapore was not declared SARS-free until 14 days after the last new infection of SARS occurred in Singapore. Second question is from Nikki Ng. She asked this question, why are elderly COVID-19 patients and patients with pre-existing illnesses such as diabetes and cardiovascular disease have a higher chance of dying from this COVID-19 infection than other patients who are younger and do not have any pre-existing illnesses? Well, that's a good question, but the answer is relatively simple. And the main reason is that just like other viral infections, like influenza, for example, if you have an underlying disease, like chronic heart failure or chronic lung disease, then you are kind of living on the edge. And if you get a viral infection like influenza or worse, COVID-19, then that might tip you over the edge and create a lot of problems. So basically what it is, is that these people have less reserves, their immune system is not as strong, and that's why they are more vulnerable to complications from COVID-19 disease. And that can actually even include death. Nikki asked another question. And she asks, the citizens of other countries, for instance, Thailand, Vietnam, do eat wildlife such as bats, snakes, dogs, which similarly the citizens of China are also eating. Why is it that the COVID-19 infection does not occur in Thailand and Vietnam, but it occurred in China in December 2019? since the citizens of the other above-mentioned countries are eating the same wildlife. Now, I'll have to be honest, and I'll tell you I don't know, but the fact is that they have done genetic studies on this virus, and they think it wasn't multiple events. In other words, it wasn't multiple people eating multiple bats or multiple pangolins or whatever animal is the intermediate source for this vi uh, virus, but rather they think it was a single event. And so what happened was the mutation occurred which allowed the virus to cross from the animal into humans, and then it took off explosively, because this mutation allowed the virus to spread rapidly. And in fact, this was borne out by the recent WHO mission to, uh, to China, which uh, they just published their report this afternoon. And when they did the press conference, they announced that they went and they looked at samples from Wuhan, from Hubei province, and from other parts of China, and they looked and they had been doing flu surveillance. In other words, they're looking for flu, they're looking for bird flu, for new strains of flu. So they had collected samples over the weeks and months. And what they found was that earlier in the year, there was no evidence of COVID-19 at all. It just suddenly appeared at the end of 2019, and it continued to appear after that in the early part of this year. So in other words, this is a truly new virus. Uh, just made one jump from animals to humans, and then it took off from humans to humans, and it's been spreading all over the world since. Okay, next question is from Jennifer Lim Su Mien. She raised this question, how are medical professionals going to manage those who display symptoms of being reinfected? Now, this whole issue of reinfection is a complicated one, and personally, I'm very skeptical. The story about reinfection comes from cases reported in Guangdong in China, and also a woman in Japan who apparently was discharged, was well, had a bit of a sore throat, went for a screening test, and was found to be positive again. Now, there are a couple of possible explanations for this. One explanation is maybe she continued shedding virus for a long time. And, and we know that this happens with other viral infections. There are some people who continue shedding virus even though they have no symptoms. And so the test could be positive, but this may be what we call a false positive. Uh, the other possibility is that what they are detecting is not live virus. In other words, we have no evidence that she spread the virus to anyone. But this is just the RNA. You know, it's like DNA. It's the nucleic acid. It's the genes of the virus, which is detected by the test. 
So we don't know whether this is actually a new reinfection or rather left over from her original infection, which I personally think is more likely. Because sometimes the test may be negative when there's actually virus particles that are still present. So it is quite possible she had the viral infection, they tested her, they thought she was negative, they let her go home, and then a couple of weeks later they tested her again and she was still positive. And we know this from our Singapore patients. There are some patients who are really well who continue to test positive just because the virus is hanging around or they have dead virus that's left in their throat or in their nose and that is what is picked up by the test. So it's still too early to say. But if indeed there are reinfections, I think that medical professionals now are pretty uh, well equipped into handling these cases. We know how to wear pr protective equipment to uh, prevent ourselves from getting infected and we also know how to protect other patients from getting infected. The other reason why I'm skeptical about this story about reinfection is when they test these patients, and they've done this in China, they've done this in Singapore, they've done this in Europe, they find that patients have antibodies to the, to the virus. In other words, they are immune. Like, you know, when you get chicken pox, you get it once, you're never going to get it again. So your body builds up the antibodies to the virus, and then it protects you from future attacks of the virus. So there's every indication that that's going to be happening, which is why I think she wasn't reinfected, but she, that maybe she never cleared the virus particles in the first place. Okay, next question is from Peter Andrew. And the question was, could the spread be prevented or minimized? And the answer is yes. And I think that is happening in many settings where the spread of the virus is controlled through simple, good, old-fashioned uh, hygiene methods, ensuring there's hand hygiene, but more importantly, finding every single case of the virus, isolating them, and making sure they're treated so they cannot spread the virus to anyone else. That's what we're doing here in Singapore, and that's what they've been doing in many different countries. I personally don't think you need to, to shut down all traffic and commerce because the, the side effects are terrible, but you may have to do that if you've got thousands of people infected, like in Wuhan or in Hubei and places like that. The question is from Rain Zhang Hui Zi. And the question is, can we get infected by COVID-19 from a mosquito bite which had previously bitten a positive person? And the answer is, I think that's highly unlikely. And there are two reasons. The first reason is that this virus seems to thrive only in humans and maybe bats or some other intermediate animal. There is no evidence that this virus can survive in mosquitoes, unlike, for example, the dengue or the Zika virus. The second reason is the virus is in the blood for a very short period of time. Now we know that what happens is you, somebody coughs, you breathe it in, or you touch a contaminated surface and you put it on your nose or your mouth or your eyes, then it gets into your respiratory tract and then you start going to your lungs and it causes problems. There has been one post-mortem report of an unfortunate individual who died from the virus infection. And what they did was they looked for the virus everywhere. They looked for it in the liver, they looked for it in the kidney, they looked for it in the heart, and they couldn't find it. The only place they could find it was in the lungs. So for those reasons, I think it's very unlikely that the virus is going to be spread by a mosquito bite. Besides that, it's occurring in cold climates. Mosquitoes don't uh, do well in cold environments. Those are great questions. They deal with many aspects of this viral infection. And let's keep those questions coming in. We've got more coming up in part two of this special edition of Ask Paul Anything. Thank you.